Today I have an absolutely phenomenal DIY home theater tour that features three DIY Sound Group Vortex 15s, two Lavoce 21 inch subwoofers, two monstrous Stereo Integrity 24 inch subwoofers, all behind a 120 inch acoustic transparent screen, and even a third 24 inch subwoofer directly behind the theater seats. You're going to see Charles's handiwork throughout this entire home theater tour. He built some really cool DIY movie poster acoustic panels, custom La Scala's that he handcrafted using Bob Kreitz components, a powerful JL Gotham clone that he built using two Stereo Integrity 15 inch drivers, and be sure to stay till the very end of the video as we'll look at an Audi tricked out with all Stereo Integrity component speakers, Stereo Integrity amplifiers, and a massive 24 inch Stereo Integrity subwoofer in an infinite baffle with the rear of the sub being completely visible from underneath. Now before we jump into the tour, I want to give a big thank you to today's sponsor, Stereo Integrity. Stereo Integrity is a direct speaker manufacturer specializing in high stroke, low distortion loudspeakers for the DIY community. They have a wide range of products that span from their budget friendly $200 18 inch subwoofer to their flagship $1,800 24 inch subwoofer that you'll see firsthand in this home theater tour. And if you're into car audio, you'll be excited to know that they also make component speakers and amplifiers that will also be featured at the end of this video. Check out stereointegrity.com. I'll have a link down in the description below. Well, Charles, thanks so much for inviting us into your incredible home. Guys, this is gonna be a really fun home theater tour, but I wanted to throw in something extra because this is truly unique. Charles is an incredible woodworker, and I want him to share a lot about these two speakers, the subwoofer, as well as the speaker. So Charles, thanks so much for having us, man. And tell us about what's going on in your living room setup. Well, Mike, you know, thanks for, for having me. Yeah, man. Is, uh, I enjoy you, you know, coming here. Um, these are not real La Scala's. These are clones, I guess you can call them. I built them. Yeah. Um, I got them from a, all the parts from a company called, you know, Kreitz. Mm -hmm. um, they sell all the replacement parts for most, you know, clip speakers. Sure. Um, ever since I saw these, I really liked them. I wanted to build them. I found out about them. These are a little bit different than your standard clips. They're, um, they're poured in the back. Okay. Um, this is all one cabinet. This is sealed off couple ports in the very back. They dig a lot deeper yeah. than, than a standard Klipsch um, or La Scala. You don't have to have the subwoofer uh, mm -hmm. for most music, but you know, I'm kind of a bass head, so I do like to have, sure. you know, I like to have a little bit more bass than, than usual. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I remember I used to have three La Scalas, as you guys know, and they don't really dig that deep. And so by modifying that and making mm -hmm. it ported, how low do these these go about 30 well, the, maybe the tuning is about 32 okay but i do have these on a little bit of dsp yeah i've got them boosted um somewhere around 17 hertz okay they can get a little bit muddy i changed up a little bit yeah um but i can tune that it's not a big deal but they do dig yeah they'll get into the mid to low 20s before gotcha. they get nasty if i don't turn it up wow yeah. that's incredible yeah. well you've done an in, uh, just a beautiful job i love the finish here and there's kind of like this two-tone right mm -hmm. you've got like yeah. a a gloss finish up top and then down here kind of more of a matte so those are sweet we had the chance to listen to some some two channel music in here and it sounded really really good mm -hmm. i definitely love hearing these now tell us about this this is truly unique it looks kind of familiar to something <laughs> that i saw back in the day yeah, yeah and you guys might recognize what it looks like so tell us about that so this is what you think it is it's a it is a diy uh, stereo integrity nick sent me these right here, these SQL 15s. Uh, this is my second pair mm -hmm. that I've had. Um, I love them. So I saw this cabinet long, long time ago, JL Audio yeah. does it, it's a Gotham, um, but it's a, it's a monster. It's way out of my price range, sure. but I can build stuff. So I kind of cloned it. It's not a true clone. Um, I built it to match the height of this right here. Yeah. It's usually they're about like that big. Gotcha. Um, but these things, this, this, uh, this, you know, this gets the job done. Gets so these are low. two yeah. 15s in a That's sealed right. enclosure. Mm -hmm. And then what are you using to power that? I have a Crown XLS 1502 sitting back here okay. that runs it. 
Um, that's plenty. You yeah. heard it. It's plenty. <laughs> yeah. It could do more. I will clip it. So I got to be careful. Gotcha. Um, it could take more, but you know, there's, there's no need, you know, as long as I don't clip it, then yeah. I'm fine. You know? So you may mention the interesting com or interesting comment that this is easier for you to build than a rectangular. It cabinet? is. Um, well, okay. So when you build a, a square cabinet, um, there's a lot of panels to cut. There's, okay. you know, there are six panels sure. with this. You're only going to cut four panels. Now you do have to curve it. This is, this is two layers. Right. Um, the bat, the, the walls are one and a half inches thick. Okay. So you do got to curve it. That takes about 30 minutes to make, you know, I think 64 odd, uh, cuts per panel. Okay. Um, glue it up, you know, just strap it. I, mm -hmm. I did it. I laid it horizontally and then clamped it down gotcha. and then did a second layer and filled the curfing area full of epoxy right so it's solid i mean it's probably about 350 pounds oh it's, uh, my goodness man. but it was a very easy build once you build once you wrap it you got a baffle and you know it's i say it's easy it's easy I mean, just piece of cake right yeah. you guys can build that right <laughs> yeah. that's incredible yeah. and then i love the customization you've got mm -hmm. on the top tell me about that this is this is oh this the, MD, the cabinet is mdf okay. so it's uh, two layers two layers one layer on the bottom uh, the baffle has this layer, which is, I believe it's white oak. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a builder. I don't really know wood species. I sure. think it's, it smells like it. Okay. I know the smells. Um, this is removable. It covers up the mounting ring. Gotcha. I don't, I don't like screws showing. Yeah. No, uh, but I do super like, clean. I like my cap head screws. That's why I made it. That was intentional. Yeah. And then I, you know, uh, Nick's a good friend of mine. I went ahead and put the logo on there on the JL version. It has, it has the amp board up here. Right, correct. Um, and I believe it says Gotham maybe on it or on mm -hmm. the back. I'm gotcha. not quite sure. But um, I don't have the external DSP version, so I just yeah. stuck the, the logo up there for them. And that yeah. is absolutely incredible. And yeah. then what are you running um, like to drive everything? The so everything is back inside here. Um, I have an Onkyo. It's a RZ730, I think. It's okay. actually, it was in my theater. Gotcha. Um, I just replaced it probably six, eight months ago. Nice. Um, That'll probably do about a hundred, you know. Yeah. I think into those right there, and sure. then obviously I have my my Crown XLS. Yeah. And these are um, really a, a yeah. sensitive; they're high efficient, so they don't. You take don't a need lot. any power. I yeah, mean, they a don't walk take a lot. Will do it, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, yeah. what kind of TV you got here? What size? That is a seventy-four, I think. Okay. You know? We don't ever watch it. I mean, we, gotcha. we bought that right when I was building the theater, and then sure. we just we just don't even, we don't even watch it anymore. Yeah. Really. You know, she, my wife watches most of the time. Uh, her, you know, her little yeah, streaming uh, tablet. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. Well, super yeah. cool. I just wanted you guys to see this because that is really dope. That is the coolest DIY subwoofer I think I've ever seen. And these Clone Scholars look absolutely fantastic. Well, let's head on into your theater room because I know that's what you guys are wanting to see. He's got a really incredible setup. Let's go check it out. So here we are in Charles's home theater. Now, as you saw in the two channel setup, you can probably already see Charles is very, very handy. And you're going to see throughout this entire build, his entire home theater, he's pretty much built this thing from scratch. Charles, kind of give us an idea of the dimensions of the room and where is this physically in your house? Because that's kind of interesting as well. Yeah, this is, this is the garage. Uh, it's about two thirds of the garage. The garage is right there. Those are doors. Yeah. Um, so the dimensions are about 13 eight okay and then about you know 13 eight and then about 17 long gotcha minus this about 20 inches of false wall so okay. it goes from here back another 20 inches from all the speakers gotcha yeah. so and then how high are your ceilings eight feet three inches I okay think. so yeah. he's like yeah. down to the inches yeah. man that's awesome <laughs> so you can kind of get an idea of the space that we're working with and so we've got a projection unit mm -hmm. here what kind of size screen are you working with? This is a 123 diagonal. Mm -hmm. um, that is the largest I could fit in the room uh, because of the depth of my of the room itself. Gotcha. Um, I couldn't go in. Most people bump it out, put a little cabinet. That's my walk with my foyer right there. Oh, so there's yeah, nothing I can do work. about it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So there's yeah. a limitation there. And mm -hmm. the cool yep. thing is I, I try to encourage everybody, you can build a theater room anywhere. I've seen them in a 12 by 13 bedroom. Mm -hmm. Here we have one in a garage. I've seen them in bonus rooms. The best thing to do is just figure out what space you have to work with and just make it happen, man. Get creative. So very cool. What kind of, um, is this fabric that you bought? Is it spandex or? This is spandex. Okay. Um, there's one, two, three, 
there's five panels. Uh -huh. uh, this goes across the top. This is two layers. It's got the white and then the black on the back side. Gotcha. And uh, the rest of it is just, you know, just black. Um, but spandex, it's it doesn't have very good gain. I believe it's less than one. It's, okay. It's, it's kind of low. Sure. But you know, the room when you turn off the lights, it's no big deal. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it it looks great. So if you can get your yeah. room dark enough, mm -hmm. then that's going to be sufficient. Yep. So spandex number one is inexpensive. That's correct. Yeah. And it's pretty easy to use mm -hmm. and to manipulate. So the great thing is that you'll see in this theater is that so much of this is super budget conscious. I mean, like you can build a lot of this stuff for a fraction of what it would cost to buy a screen that size or acoustic panels when we talk about those. What are you using to project onto the screen? That is a JVC. I, I don't know the actual model. I could okay. look it up in my, on my sure, page. Sure, it'll all be linked down to the It's a DLA something, something another. It's, okay. I think it was common about five years ago. Okay, so it's an it older projector. Yeah, it's older. 4K, yeah, yeah. 1080p? It's 4K, it's, well, it's 4K, it's not real 4K. Okay. It's the, um, how they upscale it, whatever. Yeah. I don't think most people yeah. can tell the difference, honestly. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. If you did a side-by-side -side comparison, I bet a lot of people would not be able to tell between the 4K and Really? The, I think so. I mean, you could stand four inches from the screen and not see. I mean, it's yeah. it's insane. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So, Beautiful picture. Yeah. Great picture there. But then you've also got something in front of that. What's that? That is a panomorphic um, uh, lens. Uh, this is a, a 1.35 or... Is that what it is? 2.35 to, to 1. To one yeah. Mm -hmm. So that switches it from 16 to 9 you sure. know, to the to the full anamorphic. Very um, cool. So it's... I didn't have it originally. Originally, this was a 16 by 9, but when I made the uh, the room, I didn't tell you this, okay. used to be the other way around. Oh, um, gotcha. Last year, I switched it. Okay. It used to be 16 by 9 because they did do some gaming in here, yeah. um, but they got a little bit older, sure. and I flipped it and made it more theater than, gotcha. than, uh, than kind of playing around. So, sure. Yeah. So we've yeah. got projector and then... Is that a mount that you made? Is that something that you bought? It is. When I got the uh, when I got the lens, I got it off of eBay. They stopped making the plate for it, gotcha. so I couldn't mount it to it. So I did the best I could. You can see, you know, it doesn't it doesn't project perfectly onto the screen. Sure. Um, but it's it's good enough. The masking on this, it's not masked. There's no masking. It's okay. it's you know it's it's the spandex. Sure. Um, and it really chews up the light, so you don't really yep. see where it spills over it. Yeah. So, it so anything that bleeds yeah. over, it's going to get yeah. absorbed into that. It's so very that. similar to what we got, you know felt. Most people use felt. Sure. But the black spandex is it's yeah. you know it's almost as good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah felt's going to run you a lot more. Yeah. It's going to be a lot more cost, um, not prohibitive, but it'd just be more costly. But so that just has a beautiful um, just presentation. It's super mm -hmm. clean. Lights go out, and all you see is the image from JVC. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So yep. from your JVC projector. And so let's talk about now. Let's transition to some of the coolest parts of this theater, and that's the speakers mm -hmm. and subwoofers. So behind this false wall, what do we have back there? All right, so the LCR, left center right speakers, are from DIYSG. Mm -hmm. They're a Vortex 15s. Gotcha. They are like these things right over here. Okay. They're, I get a lot of people don't understand it. They're coaxials. Right. So all you see is the bass driver. You don't see the compression driver. Sure. The compression so explain driver. what that is. So all right, so the bass driver, that's where you know, the deep stuff comes correct. from. But people, the tweeter, you know, people always say, where's the tweeter? Right. So that tweeter, instead of having a big old horn like people are used to. Correct gets screwed into the back yep. of the magnet and it the, it's it, the the pole is clear it goes right through the the dust cap correct um so you don't see it it's there right but you just don't see it it's, yeah so you know, imagine like this spandex mm -hmm. is where the dust cap is and so that sound is coming the tweeter is actually in the mid-range is coming right, right through the it, center yeah. of it yep. so that's a super cool design um and it time aligns that mid-range and tweeter with the woofer as well it does there's a benefits to it you know yeah yeah, yeah. So we've got how many speakers back here? We got three. So you've got the left, center, right, mm -hmm. and it's up against the wall. I don't like that, but it's you know it is what it is. I am I'm limited, but that's my fault because there is a 24 a uh, Stair Integrity HS24 here. There's another one right here, and then there is a 21 inch driver and then a 21 inch driver right here. Everything is ported. Um, the Stair Integrity 24s they are net. I think 20 cubic feet. Okay. The tuning is 11 hertz. Okay. Um, the 21s, they're I, I I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Lavos or something. I don't okay. know what it is. All right. Um, on Parts Express, everyone buys them. Gotcha. Those are mid bass. They're tuned to around 34 hertz. Okay. So basically, the 24s are handling the ultra Super ultra low, low stuff. Yep. 
Um, they kind of roll off. I have a kind of a, a bad 45 hertz range okay. from them. And the, the, the 21s really kick in and there. it actually makes a spike. I had to tone that down a little bit. Okay. Um, but it is flat. Without any EQ, it's, it's flat to about eight hertz. Most guys will boost it. Um, right. If I boosted it, yeah. um, where say my ceiling is say 100, you know, 140 decibels, okay. I could drop that down to sure. 130 decibels and extend down to four hertz yeah. or five hertz. But I don't do that yeah. because if you've ever listened to uh, watched a movie and you hear five, six, seven, eight hertz, ten, yeah. it's it's for more than a couple seconds, it's it's annoying. It's yeah. really you just, it just can't shakes take everything it. Yeah. in the room. Yeah, yeah. So you do, you know, sometimes you, you know, and I don't listen to people. Say, well, why do you have all this? You know, obviously, I don't. I, I use compression when I do it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I use the volume, all the, the software to bring it down. Gotcha. That way, the bass doesn't overwhelm. Yeah. But when I have people over, you know, Mike, I, yeah. I'll, I'll get rid of all that stuff and run full tilt. It's fun, you <laughs> we know. Crank it up for a little bit. It's fun but, for a couple of minutes, yeah. but not, you know. Yeah, a not, lot of people, not, they, yeah. they see somebody like yourself and they say, mm -hmm. man, you've got. I mean, I've got a 12 inch woofer and it, it shakes, you know, the picture frame on my wall. Mm -hmm. well, that's cool and everything. And there's nothing wrong with that. But part of the benefit of having multiple drivers, especially large drivers, is that it pressurizes the room. You don't have to crank it up as loud. The drivers themselves are, are basically just kind of coasting along. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, even during the big scenes that we were playing in here and we cranked it up a little bit, those were probably just, I mean, they're just idling. They're not One light us. on the amp is all it is. I yeah. mean, it's, you know, you could buy the, you could, you could do this. I have, you know, very budget friendly amps. So the the rated power isn't what it really makes. Yeah. So if it says it's making two thousand, it's not. Yeah. It's 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 making much less than that. But it doesn't matter because I've I've got so much that's fine. Just give me twenty yeah. percent of what your amp can do, and I'll just throw it all together, and it, and it, it's clean. It's yeah. You know, it's it's really really clean. Yeah. Absolutely. So we've got an yeah. LCR, which I love. I mm -hmm. love seeing guys that put identical speakers, left, center, and right. Mm -hmm. Um, in a front sound stage because that's absolutely seamless transition when sound uh, travels from one speaker to the other. We've got dual 24s and dual 21s yep. behind the screen, yep. and that's incredible. And probably that would have been enough, <laughs> but <laughs> we're not in yeah. this hobby because we want enough, right? I mean, we really want to take it to the next level, yeah. and so you added something else behind the seats. Now, tell us about that bad boy. There is another HS24 behind there. Um, it is sealed. Now, there is a big issue with ported and sealed coming together. That's mostly in EQ and DSP, stuff like that. Sure. If, you know, I'll come in here four o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and yeah. spend three hours. It's done, I'm done tuning, you know, sure. until I change something. Yeah. Um, but this being so near field, it's, it's probably about 14 inches from where you're sitting. Yeah. Um, it doesn't actually pick up in my mic. Mm -hmm. It does a little bit of things. Um, I can, you know, if I have if I have peaks or something, this will sometimes fix it. Gotcha. it doesn't do a whole lot to it. I do have two Crosons under my seat. This is my seat. That's my wife's seat. Right. Um, so I'm more. So what in the world, know. man? The wife gets she gets skimped. <laughs> I'll out. get her. I'll get her some. She doesn't okay. like them, but okay. you know, yeah, that's. Um, I am on a concrete slab. Yeah. Now a lot of guys will do it in a loft, mm -hmm. and I believe Nick is doing that. So you could throw two 15s in a loft on a suspended floor yeah. and get incredible tactile. Yeah. Tactile is you're feeling mm -hmm. your house rumble, yeah. but when you're on a concrete slab, yep. you don't get that. I get a lot of transfer. I get a pile, but I've experienced a loft. Sure. And even with what I'm throwing at it, it doesn't get there. Yeah. You put this on there, and that's it gets you about where you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. About yeah. where you want to be. Yeah. And, and as far as low frequency, about where are we at low frequency in this room? Um, I mean, I could, like I said, I could, you know, I'm flat eight yeah. without tuning, but yeah. I could go as low as I want. Yeah. I mean, the, <laughs> so we're talking the, like four or five yeah. digits or four or five hertz. I've measured, um, I want to say, eight hertz, somewhere around 118 decibels. Man. Yeah. Um, and that's and that's right there. Sure. I've peaked out my SPL meter in the sweet spot back there. Yeah. 135. I don't have anything over 135. Right. Um, but I would assume it's that's approaching 140. Now you can't you can't listen to that. You got to be out of the room when you do it. Yeah. Um, uh, it'll you know don't do that. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's bad. That's yeah. really really bad. Yeah. And I don't do that. But 
it's you know it's it's louder than I'll ever need it, yeah. which means I can listen to this room as loud as I want, yeah. you know, and as long as you can take it and right. safely, right. and it's as clean. There's no clipping. There's no distortion. It's just it's yeah. you know it's just nice. You know? And the cool thing is when we yeah. were doing all the demos, we didn't even have it at reference. I mean, we were below no, reference. No, no. Great tactile response in the room. Super clean. Uh, imaging and, and the front sound stage from your LCR. And then let's talk about as well, what do you have for side surrounds as well as your rear surrounds? So the surrounds, the sides and the backs, those are also the same with the Atmos. Okay. They're all the same. All eight are DIY SG. These are Volt 10s. They're not the same as the Vortex. Okay. They, the smallest they make in the Vortex is a 12. I got and you. I just didn't want to put 12 inch drivers. Sure. Eight or 10 was a push, okay. but I did it anyway. Okay. Um, I like the look. It kind of fits the room. These kind of stand off. Everything kind of stands off the walls. So I was all right with it. Sure. Um, these are the same. They are the uh, coaxial drivers. So the compression driver yep. fires through the magnet, the pole, right. out the dust cap. The dust cap is the same. It's not spandex, same but it's yeah. a it's a acoustically transparent sure. you know, material, not paper. Super so, cool. Yeah. So did you, I'm assuming you built the, the cabinets for these? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They do have flat packs, um, but I don't, you know, I don't do flat packs. I, I just make them how I want them. That's right, yeah. man. Custom mm -hmm. to you. Now, yeah. when you say flat packs, is that the GSG flat packs? Or? GSG does not make or, anything for these. Okay. DIY so SG does offer flat packs. Gotcha. I'm thinking for everything they sell, I'm pretty okay. sure they do. I yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's super cool. So those of you kind of like me that aren't super handy, mm -hmm. A flat pack is where they send you all the lumber, it's already cut, yep. and then all you have to do is assemble it and then finish it however you want. No tools, just so. glue it together. You can use tape. You know, you don't have to use clamps or anything, just tape. <laughs> yeah. Duct tape. Yeah. So that is wild, man. So cre incredibly immersive experience. I love having identical speakers across the, the bed layer, at least for the surrounds, and then having identical speakers for the Atmos. And so we're running, so basically this is a, what, seven point, Seven, it's a seven, one point four. Uh, you could say seven, subs? two, five uh, subs, four. Yeah, there's well, they are all separate, so you could say you could say <laughs> one, two, three, you could say four. Okay, seven, four. You oh know. my yeah. goodness, man, yeah. absolutely incredible. Yeah. But this is super, super cool. So, why did you go DIY like the DIY sound group and and stereo integrity? Why did, why did you go that route? Um, I've always built my own subs. I never bought, I never really built my main speakers mm -hmm. or surrounds. I usually, a long time ago in my 20s, I, I bought the little things. Gotcha. Um, and a friend of mine, um, uh, 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 Chad Smith, he okay. actually yeah. lives right down the street. Gotcha. Um, uh, he's the get loft guy that, nice. that destroyed me. It's, he's yeah. the reason why I did what I did. It's all his fault. Uh, it is. No, it is. It is. Um, he contacted me on a, on a, Thing on Facebook one time because one of my pictures gotcha. and I got introduced to a large group of people and they told me about this yeah. compression drivers you know PA style professional these mm -hmm. accordion style surrounds um, they're super sensitive you yeah. don't need any power for them right they sound great um, and they fill a room little little dome tweeters yeah. just they sound phenomenal but dome tweeters just won't fill once you hear that that type of big sound, it's hard to really go back to it unless yeah. you have a, a little bedroom or sure. uh, say an apartment or something like that. Yeah. 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 Well, before we transition to the next thing, one thing that I want to talk about is how clean the the install is. And I know you and I had talked about how what you, what did you have to do to like <laughs> hide the wires? I mean, because we don't see anything. Yeah. Um, and again, outside of this, this is a garage. So he literally can open up that door, have access to his garage. So you had to kind of get creative over here. So what did you do over there? All right. So this, these are two doors. Mm -hmm. um, they, this is the, that's the jam right there. Um, hinges over there and the hinge is 20 inches back there. This is the top right here. So if I want to, that's how deep my garage is. So right. if I open this all the way out, that touches, you know, it's that short for my garage sure. door. So obviously you can't go through that. It's, you know, so I took a router and I did the same thing with those. And a lot of people would think that this is wildly, it's easier actually than going into the attic and mm -hmm. going through your top plate down the wall. Gotcha. So I took a router and I just routed all the way over to that loom over there. And I buried the, the speaker wire in nice. the drywall, taped over it. So that one, that one, and that one are buried into the into the drywall. That yeah. I've never seen anybody do that. And I'm sure some yeah. of you guys probably have done that, but I've never seen somebody do that. 
I would have had to try to figure out, okay, I'd go outside the wall, go up in the attic. Yeah. But I had to there because you couldn't come down there. You have to make the hinge point right there. Sure. So. And I figured, well, if I'm doing it, I might as well just do that one and that one while I'm at it. And, you know, it, it, it's, you know, it's a, a half an afternoon job. It's, it's very, very easy. Well, well, I love yeah. the fact that just how clean yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. It looks absolutely awesome. So, Charles, one area in a home theater that a lot of people neglect is acoustic treatment. And you literally have some of the coolest acoustic panels that I've ever seen. And again, these aren't something that you bought. These are something that you made. So yeah. tell us how you made these. All right. So um, first, uh, this wasn't my idea. Um, uh, Kyle Bliss, Life of Bliss on YouTube, he has a video that shows you how to do this. Yeah. And I'm sure you'll... Yeah, I can link, link it down in, in the there. description. Yeah. Sure. Um, so this is OC, Owens Corning 703, mm -hmm. uh, insulation 2 inch. And there is a, a, a cotton print on this that we order. Um, there's two frames. There's one frame that holds the OC 703 gotcha. inside. And then this, these are, this right here slides in there. So okay. this isn't part of this frame. Gotcha. Um, I think this is poplar. Uh, you could use pine, you can use MDF, doesn't really matter. Uh, use a more stable wood. Mm. MDF is really the most stable, but you got to brace it because it does get kind of weak on longer runs. Gotcha. This is MDF right here, and um, my son, uh, he came up with these designs. Uh, we CNC'd these into all of our, you know, back here, um, into all of our acoustic treatments. Right. Just, you know, we figured we'd do something different. To... It didn't take a whole lot of time. You paint it first and then, uh, and then cut it. And then I just I just screwed these panels around it, and it gave it a good, really good, clean you know clean look. Very yeah. cool. And awesome. they work. They absolutely work. Right. Yeah. And so you've got two on the sides, mm -hmm. and then we've also got two on the back, some Correct. smaller ones, and then you even got a couple of them on the ceiling. Um, and I think you mentioned you were going to add some more. Yeah, I'm getting rid of those. I have some scrap I had left over. I just wanted to put it up there just to get it done about okay. a month ago. I have four full panels. Gotcha. That I'm going to put probably two or three up there. And then I got to do some some treatment in my, not treatment. I'm putting I'm putting some one inch behind all of my pictures, mm -hmm. and I'm taking off the glass. Gotcha. And I'm gonna try to get rid of some of that echo in the living room because of my floors. Nice. Um, but I don't want anybody to see it, so I'm gonna put it behind some pictures and stuff. So. Very cool. Yeah. Getting creative with that. Now, how do you have these installed to the wall? Because a lot of guys will want to know mm -hmm. that. No, these are French cleats. Um, I'm not gonna pick that one up because this little thing right here. Yeah, that's um, fine. We can show yeah. one over there okay, on the B yeah. roll. So yeah. tell us what it looks like. So right it's there. a French cleat. It's uh, about that long, mm -hmm. and I've I've screwed them into the wall and then I put a one quarter inch standoff or three quarter inch standoff because you could you can see the air gap back there. Yeah, correct. And that just makes these things treat sound as if they're thicker. Yeah. So a two inch uh, board m may work more like a two and a half or three inch board. Gotcha. Um, so the cleat basically is cut at a 45 and you cut a second one and they mate together it's like that. Lock. And you just, it's, they're super, super simple. You know, it's they're really nice. Yeah. 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 So again, not a whole lot of cost probably in no, this. No, that's, uh, yeah, I think the whole set, everything out the door, I believe was, I know it was under 400. Wow. Uh, yeah. And that's for yeah. one, two, three, four, five. That's, that's for six plus. Yeah. You know, that little scrap stuff right and there. These are completely custom yeah. too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that is super cool. Yeah, the air gap, basically, I guess, sound travels through this, hits your wall, and mm -hmm. then starts to come back through, yeah. and then it gets absorbed mm -hmm. even more. Yep. So super cool. But this is definitely like, and I've shared this in previous videos, don't wait till the very end to do this. Start off with good acoustics, and you'll enjoy your system a whole lot better. A lot of times guys mm -hmm. will throw in, you know, they'll, they'll want more speakers or bigger speakers or better speakers. And the problem isn't, isn't your speakers. The problem is your room. Yeah. And there's yeah. so much echo and that just doesn't lead to clarity in the dialogue and such. So by having these, but I love this, man. These are super cool. And then, I mean, I guess they would be a little bit difficult and time consuming um, to change out because you'd have to change out the side. Yeah, the yeah side. that's true. Yeah. But I guess if, you know, with this one at Infinity War, you could get something I can change else any, yeah, from I can that get any picture movie. I want, yeah. So yeah. I guess that would mm -hmm. be cool. So you technically could kind of make these and change them up from time to time yeah. and not be too difficult. So Charles, I love the vibe that you have here in your room. You've got a lot of decor and just some cool elements. So kind of walk us around the room and kind of tell us about some of the pieces that you've got here. All right, so... Uh, the biggest issue a lot of people have is where to put their movies. Yeah. In, in the attic, in, in a box somewhere. Yeah. Um, so I made these uh, little shelves, and I did. Everyone asked me about why don't they fall off. That's actually a little 
quarter inch lip right there and that keeps nice. all my movies from, from falling off. Super um, smart. So there's these, these are just my regular, my regular uh, movies. I don't, right. I don't, I don't have a streaming service, well, I have a streaming service, but I don't have sure. like you have like a Plex server or something like that. Right. I don't like streaming movies if I'm going to sit down and watch a good movie I sure. want, you know, I want, you know, a disc. Go grab what yep. you want, put it that's in right. there. That side over there is the same deal. Um, but that's all my steel cases. I, I and I wanted that's to make cool. it look nice. Yeah. Uh, it's on a truss. Um, I'll send you a picture. Actually, I, I might have the picture of this truss before I okay. put the um, the sheetrock on it. But that supports that entire span mm. because those are doors. So it's got to span about 18 feet. Yeah. Um, and that's difficult, you know, to make wood span 18 feet. But sure. I came up with a creative way of doing it. And Very it's been good. up there for about four years, and there's no sag. Yeah. So I, I got it right. <laughs> nice. So we've got very you know, a cosmetic, but then also a practical side yeah. of mm -hmm. it as well. And I love seeing all the steel cases showcase. And even over here, having that middle one that's centered, yep. I love mm -hmm. it. That looks really cool. We've got some other pieces around the room. Tell us about those. All right, so um, these right here, these pictures are from my sister. They were a gift for Christmas. Um, she knows I like speakers. Um, there's some kind of printed patent thing that you get off of Amazon or something. Right. But they look, I mean, they, they match perfectly in the yeah. room. Like they were made for it. Um, that right there, that clock, that is uh, Venom, uh, that movie, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure everyone's seen it. It's a good movie, but that clock is my favorite. And one of the reasons why my son designed it, um, it was a mistake. We messed up with our CNC, it okay. gouged into it. I tried to fix it, it didn't work. I did some more stuff, and while I'm painting it, I made a mistake painting. Right. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you a little bit later on what it did, but yeah. um, the reason why it looks the way it did is because it was a mistake while I was painting. Gotcha. And I was going, well, wait a minute, this looks nice. So I kept going no way. and it made, that's the only piece I've ever done like it. That's and awesome. I'm gonna work on making more things like it, but that, I love that clock, I don't know why. I just, you, I just love well, it. because it has yeah. your handywork in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> that is yep. fantastic, yep. man. And then on the other side, now this is something really cool. I know a lot of guys, we want to let people know we're proud of our brands. We're proud of the, the speakers that we have. We're proud of the receivers or the processor, or the amplifiers or whatever, and, and even the format that our home theater supports. And a lot of times I know guys ask, you know, where can I get these signs? And, and you can buy them on eBay, and mm -hmm. they're just yep. normal little placards. But you made something just so creative. I absolutely love this. Tell us about that. All right, so that is all the gear that I have in the theater. Um, the, each individual plaque is removable. If I decide to change something, I move that out. Sure. But you, you'll, I didn't tell you this before, you'll like this. All of that is just scrap wood from yeah. other projects I've done. That's so awesome. that piece was literally free. Yeah. You know? And that's the thing. With, if, you can, if you've got the tools, that, mm -hmm. that's part yeah. of it. You've got to have the tools. But even if you don't have a CNC machine, maybe you got a buddy that has a CNC machine yeah. that, that can get creative. But I love the fact that, that you've just taken all of those little design elements, made something really, truly custom and unique, and it's just a really nice showpiece here in your theater room. Yep. Charles, a big part of enjoying a movie is having comfortable seating. Tell us what you got here. Well, these aren't actual real, you know, theater seats. We just picked these up from our rooms to go. Yeah. Uh, they were on sale. Um, they're part of a set that's in the living room that you saw earlier. This yep. is the love seat version. Gotcha. I like these um, because of this piece right here. Mm -hmm. um, I could sit down with, you know, my wife. It doesn't separate us, but I can sit down with a stranger or, yeah. or someone like you and yeah. not feel like I'm, you know, too close or right uncomfortable or something. Them, sure. but, um, I like them. They're comfortable. They're they're wild. The first leather I've ever yeah. owned. I thought I wouldn't like leather. But I do. It's, they're comfortable. I like them. Yeah. yeah. And then earlier, you mentioned something, and I want to dive back into that just a little bit. You mentioned Croson. Mm -hmm. So some of my audience may not be familiar with what Croson's are. So kind of explain what that is in relation to these seats. All right. So Croson's are their tactile transducers. They're basically like the motor um, magnet voice coil um, of a speaker, no cone. They're, you know, a little puck about like that and about like that, pretty small. Mm -hmm. And... They'll, they work on the low bass, the ultra low stuff. Gotcha. Um, I've noticed that the deeper the bass is with these, the better. 5 hertz, 20 hertz. Yeah. Um, they get a little weak, I think around 35 hertz, but it's, okay. it, the window is super small, like 34, 37, they're, they're back up. So they're a lot, a lot like a speaker. You can, you yeah. can tune them. It's a, actually, I learned that 
on a video that yeah, you, you did EQ a, a few weeks yeah. ago. You can. I never did that until I watched that video, yeah. and he was right. I used my phone with the nice. app that he, that he recommended, and it works. There's there are little lulls in um in those that I did, and it could be the construction of the furniture. Sure, it could be. You know, that's what it is. But it just gives it that. Um, like I said, I'm on a concrete you know slab right so i can't get that physical train i get the air that's yeah. not a big deal but sure. the physical transfer of energy yeah i don't really get these just kind of couple me directly to you know the sound and yeah it doesn't pull you out of a movie some guys go really crazy right um it's nice for a little bit just to play around with yeah um but if you want to watch something for two hours um, this doesn't pull you out of it. It's it's there, yeah. but it's not so much that it's bo it bothers you. you and know, I think that you know? that's a big key with anything that we implement into our home theaters is configuration and calibration. Mm -hmm. Because you can have like this many subwoofers in here could be absolutely overwhelming. You may be watching, going, "Why in the world would you want to put a twenty-four inch subwoofer right behind your seat?" Yeah. Well, it's all about calibration. It's about having that system dialed in to where it all works together and cohesively, not to where one part is kind of pulling you out of the movie and distracting you from that, um, you know. And I think you can go overboard with Croson's, you can go overboard with uh, EQ and boosting and all that mm -hmm. stuff, but you've dialed it in really, really nice here. And I know we talked a little bit about this beast back mm -hmm. here, but yeah. I'd love to talk a little bit more about that. And so we've got a 24 inch what they call a near-field subwoofer. And this sure, was yeah. actually a new concept for me. I had never experienced it until I think I went up to the Wisconsin and Illinois, and then there was some in Kansas City. And those guys, several of them, had a near-field subwoofer. And so what is the benefit of putting a near-field subwoofer, like putting one kind of close to your body? Well, uh, it's just tactile. It's when when you're watching something on a movie and it explodes or let's say this very very large monster is just walking slowly through the woods or something yeah. when he steps on the ground yeah. you know in real life you're going to feel it that's yeah, like the vibration yeah you're going to feel yeah. it um you, you can have i have very very large subwoofers in here but those things are they're nine feet away sure they're going to get you that pressure you're going to feel it right but that just that physical rumble you got to be close to it. Um, I don't know the scientific yeah. stuff behind it. Sure. I don't know, but when you put them behind you, actually putting them beside you is my favorite. Yeah, I, gotcha. it messes up my room. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. Yeah, um, I prefer a side firing near field. Okay, um, but I don't like the way it looked, so we went with the twenty four in the back. Gotcha. You could do a, some fifteens and get very close. You still don't get that. You know, the twenty four is going to get the content down that a lot of people don't think they have, they're, right. they're in the movies. Yeah. If you don't have large format drivers or a tactile transducer of yeah. any any of them, they make all kinds. Sure. You know, I'm sure you know Some budget-friendly ones like That's Dayton right. Audio, yeah. I think, makes some. Then you got butt kickers. I've had butt kickers. I've had uh, four butt kickers. Yeah, and then Those are nice. would be yeah. the cream yeah. of the crop kind of thing. They're, yeah, the, 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 for me, yeah. um, just the low end, I'll be honest, it's just the low mm -hmm. end, that 20 hertz and below, because you're yeah. not going to need... To feel 35 hertz, sure. you don't need to feel that. Yeah. You know, you, you're going to hear that. Yeah. But you're going to need to feel 17 hertz. Yeah, because our ears don't hertz. really yeah. hear pretty much like below 20 hertz. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's that tactile feeling that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I learned from a previous tour is one of the gentlemen shared with me, whatever size driver you have. So in your case, a 24 mm -hmm. inch, um, your body needs to be within that distance yep. from that subwoofer. So from the front of the cone uh, or from the front of the driver to your body, we need to be within 24 inches, and we are. If you get it too far back, then you lose that that near field tactile base that you're wanting to get. Um, but that thing's incredible, and you built the cabinet mm -hmm. for that. Yep. What mm -hmm. size cabinet is it? I think you told me the volume uh, or cubic The volume. net volume internal is 11 cubic feet. Okay. Um, that's on the high end of what Stair Integrity um, recommends. You can go down... Uh, to eight, okay, um, and still be well within. You know, you can go down to six if you really, really had to. Okay. You'd have a hard time. You'd have physically have a hard sure. time putting a twenty-four in a, in a six cubic foot cabinet. Gotcha. But I mean, if you're if you're limited, right? I I I saw a guy talking one time on AVS that said um, he was a couple of years from being able to do it. He bought it and sure. something happened, so he had it in the crate that they shipped it in, oh, wow. and he hooked it up on that. <laughs> 
He said just that alone, right. you know, still sounded kind was, of you know, was, I mean, you, it, 24 inches of, of displacement with yeah. that excursion is just, it's it's a beast. It's a monster. Sure. I'll send you a picture of it sitting yeah. next to this right here. It's, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Now, is there a benefit to going with a bigger cabinet? Is there a reason why you went with bigger? Well, that's for the sealed. Yeah. <laughs> I had to fit the magnet inside the cabinet. Okay. Um, and when we get done, I might show you that that bump out I had to modify. Okay. But it's I want to say somewhere 13, 14, 15 inches deep. It's it's a very very deep um, uh, driver, so you gotcha. need space. So I had to make it, you know, deep. Sure. And I wanted to make it as wide as the desk back okay. there. Um, Eleven cubic feet is fine. It sounds good. I've had them sealed for music. Yeah. It sounds really good. And I just, you know, I stuck with it. I, I like the way it sounded. And, yeah. You know, I haven't heard eight yet. A uh, buddy of mine, I believe, um, Kyle Bliss, yeah. has his in eight. Yeah. Um, and he says that they're phenomenal. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a beast, man. If you want some really low frequencies, we're talking sub 10 hertz, you want a lot of impact, that thing will jam, man. So yeah, it's it absolutely it. phenomenal. So a couple other pieces inside the room, and then we'll kind of head outside because we'll talk about your rack and components. But you normally don't see this, and so kind of tell us, we've got a computer set up back here. Mm -hmm. What's going on there? Well, um, it is not a, uh, you know, it, it's not hooked up to the screen. I had before. Uh, my youngest son is a gamer. Yeah. Um, he likes everything hardwired. He doesn't like the lag. Yeah. So we, dis we disconnected it. Um, that is a custom uh, PC. I mm -hmm. built it about five years ago. Yeah. Um, it's only, I think, maybe the second computer ever, but I'm not a computer builder. Sure. I can build, you know, just about anything, just give me, you know, give me some direction. Give me this, you know, to I follow. can do it. So that's just it's plexiglass. I went to Home Depot, built the cabinet, um, had a, a special wire from 3M yeah. that I got so I can take the video card and do it horizontally. Yeah, gotcha. Um, so you can see it. Most yeah. of them kind of stick out like that. True. Um, but it's nice. It's it's when I built it four or five years ago, it was you know it would do everything that. It it was, it's, but now it's it, he's got a laptop that beats it. And it yeah, it bothers me, but you know, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> electronics changes very very quickly. Very quickly, yeah, I can't keep up with it. So, yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of electronics, let's talk about the electronics that powers your entire system. Tell us, kind of walk us through your rack. All right, so uh, the rack has the um, Panasonic. I think it's the UB four twenty. I think mm -hmm. um, my processor is the uh, Marantz. Uh, the 7706. Yeah, I've got the same um, one. Phenomenal. Yeah, I like it. I just bought it maybe six months ago. Um, it, I, I don't know if it's just me or what, but I swear that my picture quality mm. is better, I guess it's going past through, gotcha. than my Onkyo was. Gotcha. I don't know if that's true, but it, to me it seems like the picture quality is also better. Gotcha. Um, all of my subs and speakers are on their own independent amps. Um, so I have a, a Behringer 12,000. Um, they don't make it anymore. I got lucky I, I found it. Okay. Uh, that powers my two ported 24s up front. Mm -hmm. I've got a XLS 2502 doing my 21s. I've got a 2502 doing this 24 right here. Right. I've got a 2000 doing my Crosons. And I've got uh, a 2000 also. I, I should have the 1502s because I have the 1502s on all of my bed speakers. Mm -hmm. But on my front, I have the 2000s just because everything is back ordered. So I just yeah. had to buy what what I, you know, at the time was available. So 2002 is what I have on my LCR. And it's, it's all the power it needs. So everything is on its own amp. Each amp is on its own leg, Yeah, about two per leg, I think. Yeah. So why did you go with, um, you know, a lot of guys like myself, I've got, um, you know, just your standard amplifier. Maybe they'll go with a five channel, seven channel. In my case, I have an 11 channel amplifier all in one unit. Why did you choose to go with what they call pro audio amplifiers? Um, one value. It's, yep. you, you can't beat the value. That's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. You could buy a, um, a, a popular one as an outlaw, yeah. say a seven channel or a five channel or something. Yeah. The one downside to that is if your seven channel outlaw goes out, mm -hmm. then you just lost seven channels. Yeah. So with that, you know, if I lose something, you know, if I lose one of my amps, then I just take it off my 
Atmos and I won't have Atmos or Surround back gotcha. and no big deal until I find a replacement. Sure. Now that's a big deal. Maybe two years ago, probably not a big deal. Right. But now that's, you know, that's something to think about. You know? Yeah. 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 So the value is, is huge because I, you can get them for like 200 bucks, 300 bucks. If you buy, if you buy them used mm -hmm. off of eBay or something or Facebook, then yeah. yeah, you can get them for under $300. Yeah. You can buy B stocks. Most of mine are B stocks. Okay. Um, you can get those for starting at around four hundred dollars, I think. Gotcha. So brand new B stock, yeah. or you can buy a lot of mine are also restocks. They're gotcha. open boxes, displays. Almost nothing I have in that rack, even my Marantz, is is a, a, a display. Nice. Yeah. So mm -hmm. saving some money there. Yeah. So we've got a ton of power, okay, or at least a ton of amplification, and so. I imagine you're not running this all off like a, uh, just the original 15 amp circuit. So kind of walk us through power. I know a lot of guys have been asking me, Michael, can you share, like, what do they run to their room? What are they powering all their equipment with? So walk us through that. All right. So this is easy for me. I got lucky. My power right outside. Is right there. That nice. panel is right there. That makes sense. So when I framed all this in, oh, I didn't mention this. This room is, uh, a room inside of a room. Gotcha. All right, so it's fully, it's standing inside my garage, sure. not attached to my house. Gotcha. It's attached. Cool, so that'll help yep. not transferring yep. the base to And it does inside. work, yeah, it does work. Two layers of drywall, gotcha. the five eighths with the green glue. Okay, so you um, did all of it. Nice. Oh yeah, 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 suspended ceiling, the uh, clips okay. and channels. Okay. So it is, is it's, the, it's as separated from the house as possible. So nice. I can really go crazy in here and you wouldn't even, I had a, a demo one time about three years ago yeah. and we were doing two channel in there and home theater in wow. here and, and they didn't know there was no bleed over that's it was awesome really, really nice. yeah, yeah when i crank it up yeah. my my wife i get the text can you turn it down mm -hmm. it's too loud it's shaking the house <laughs> yeah so the i just went up while i was framing it came down i put the outlets on the side some of them on a 15 with the lights okay no big deal 15 sure. is more than enough for lights and sure. most pretty much anything yeah um but i also brought in Five twenty amp legs. Five now, twenty amps. That's correct. Yes. Holy cow! Because originally all of my or this room was it used to be the screen over there. Correct. I right. switched it around about about a year ago. Yeah. And so all my equipment was in here. Not that much. Okay. Um, I was on I wasn't on separates at the time, so yeah. I had AVR, a few subwoofer amps. Sure. Um, so I needed some legs and I needed some twenty amps in here. Okay. When I switched it, I actually brought a company. I didn't want to do it because it was a lot more power with mm -hmm. the 30. I didn't want to mess with, I'm not an electrician. Sure. You can do it DIY. They sell stuff at Home Depot. Sure. Just do it safe. Yeah. I know a contractor and he told me the codes and stuff. So I just did what, you know, what the contractor told me to do. Yeah. Um, I've been doing it my whole life. It's um, fairly handy. Yeah. So I did have a company come in and put the legs out there for the rack. That is three twenties and a 30. <laughs> out there yeah oh man so you got a ton of power mm -hmm. coming to this room mm -hmm. but the cool thing is you know you were able to do this um because you were framing out the room you were building mm -hmm. the yep. room definitely a lot harder when you've already got like my house i had an existing home i ran a single 20 amp and i've never tripped a breaker mm -hmm. yet yep. um, but having more power is always a good thing there's nothing wrong with that i think with anything in home theater having more subwoofers that just means that they don't have to work as hard. No, you're right. Yeah, Same yeah. thing with the power. If you've got a ton of power coming in the room, that means those amplifiers are, are receiving everything that they need. They're not you know, worried about dimming. They're not worried about kind of sucking the life out of that, um, that leg. Um, so having, man, 230s? 130 and 130 320s. And then, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah. yeah, a lot of power. So definitely, I mean, you could... You could power uh, your house and the neighbor's house and a couple other <laughs> houses probably with that. So super, super cool. Now, one thing I want to do is I've kind of got a surprise for you guys. We actually have here today Nick from Stereo Integrity. He's the owner. I'd love to bring Nick into the conversation because I've got some questions I want to ask him about his speakers and subwoofers. Well, Nick, thanks so much for joining us for this incredible home theater. Nick, this is actually my second time experiencing stereo integrity and both 
home theaters are absolutely phenomenal. You make some incredible subwoofers. Uh, the 24s that Charles have here are just absolutely impactful. And I love the fact that they dig really, really deep. So maybe for the folks uh, that are watching the video, they don't know who Stereo Integrity is or they don't know who you are. Tell us a little bit about you as well as the company. Well, Stereo Integrity has been open this year now 22 years. So uh, I started out as an enthusiast and my, like I was telling you earlier, my dad always had really uh, high-end high two-channel audio stuff in the beginning when yeah. I was you know, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. And uh, then I got, you know, got a little further into it and started my own company building or manufacturing subwoofers to begin with. And so now we have a full line of subwoofers from a really affordable subwoofer like the HC18 for okay. 200 bucks, wow. all the way up to our big bad boy 24 for 1800, which is has a carbon fiber cone on it. Nice. So we offer you know a lot of different products over a, a big range, and so um, yeah, like I said, I started off uh, as an enthusiast and still am an enthusiast. Still have you know two channel systems, still have a home theater. Sure. And so uh, so yeah, we started off there and now ended up here. And where are you located at? We're located in basically in Hickory, North Carolina. Okay, in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I love the fact that if you're interested in getting into DIY and you're wanting to build your own subwoofers, 200 bucks for an 18 inch driver, Yeah, that's incredible. That's huge value. And then of course, if you want the big mama jama, you can go on up the ladder. Um, so we know that Charles has three 24 inch subwoofers here. Mm -hmm. Does Stereo Integrity just make subwoofers or are there other products that you offer as well? No, we go all the, all the way up to or down, however you want to look at it, into even tweeters. Okay. So we make everything from subwoofers, starting with big subwoofers, as our 24. Okay. Going all the way down, our smallest sub is a 12 inch, as our SQL series. Gotcha. And then we have a six and a half, a three and a half inch mid, and a tweeter. Okay. So if somebody wanted to build their own um, tower, they could use all of your components to build that. Exactly. Now, do you offer like the networks for that, or is that something they have to come up with on their own, or how does that work, like the crossovers? Right, the crossovers they have to come up with on their own, but the way that we made our speakers, speakers meeting, uh, six and a half, three and tweeter, mm -hmm. they're very, very flexible. Gotcha. So even an off-the-shelf uh, passive network from either Parts Express or okay. Zalatron or Matasound, you can get those and it's literally plug and play. Gotcha. Because all the drivers are really close matched in sensitivity, so there's no you know, big, uh, big need to spend a lot of extra money on a, on a custom crossover. Gotcha. Super cool. So uh, again, wide range. I didn't realize that you actually made speakers as well. I thought you just made subwoofers. So that is super cool. So Nick, there's a lot of companies out there on the market that sell subwoofers. What are some of the ways that Stereo Integrity is trying to set themselves apart from the other brands? That's a good question. How we do it, and we've done it since the beginning, is we design all of our speakers from the ground up. What I mean by that is like we design everything in, in FEA to begin with and in CAD. Okay. And so everything is designed and engineered in-house. Gotcha. So we design the size of the magnet, the height of the magnet, the thickness, the grade of the magnet, mm -hmm. even with the steel, the grade of the steel. And it goes, it goes all the way up. Like the spiders, if we want to either be linear, nonlinear, progressive, um, all that good stuff. So we design everything. And so everything that's in our speakers is custom tooled. You won't see a speaker from, from ours that's like, oh, that, you know, every single thing about the speaker is just like this other one. Gotcha. Well, it's not like that. So everything that we make is is custom engineered. Right. Um, you know, a lot of the times, like I say everything from the spider, the coil, the motor, you know, we've designed it in-house. Gotcha. So it's not something we just slapped our name on it. We sure. slapped our name on it for a reason because we, most of it's, it's custom designed by us. Nice. So by being able to custom design it is... Is there a way that consumers can kind of work with you maybe to tailor a speaker or a subwoofer to maybe some need that they have in their own setup? Absolutely. And a lot of our, our drivers, even, even our most uh, budget-friendly offering is our HT18. Okay. And it'll work well in sealed, ported, and even infinite baffle. But if you really want to dig really deep into what we can do as a company, on our upper-level items like our IB24 and our HS24, mm -hmm. we can custom... Uh, basically modify those woofers to work specifically with what you want. Gotcha. Like for instance, like our, our flagship, our 24, uh, we have a customer actually recently that purchased four of them and right. he's using them for an infinite baffle in his home theater. Gotcha. So we're taking the woofer as it would normally sit and we're actually um, making the magnet not as strong 
So it will raise the queue up a little bit okay. to more fit infinite baffle versus sealed reported. Gotcha. So we can do that on our upper end stuff. And sure. then on, our, um, on all of our other products, they're very flexible. They pretty much ride that line, mm -hmm. ride the, ride that line yeah. of either sealed, ported, or infinite baffle. Gotcha. So you can use them in one of those situations so if you flexible. want. they're pretty flexible. Yeah. That's really cool to know that, that because you're not a huge company, you can have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with a customer if they've got certain needs or certain desires, then you can kind of work with them to say, okay, yes, we can do that, or yes, we, or we can't do that, or and it's gonna cost this much to be able to modify that. Right. So that is super cool to be able to have something truly unique and something that they just don't have to just buy off a shelf and say, I hope it works in my setup. They can say, here's my setup, here's my limitations, here's what I need. Is there something that you know that you can do on your end to make that the most compatible for my setup. That is right. super, super cool. So Nick, I probably heard about Stereo Integrity maybe a couple of years ago, and I've been doing home theater for a long time, and you said you've been around for 24 years? Mm -hmm. 22. So why is it that more people haven't heard about Stereo Integrity? I mean, you make some incredible products, man, <laughs> um, but I don't see any advertisement. What's going on there? Well, I like staying it's fairly small, I'll put it that way. I like having good personal interaction with my customers, mm. like where we're at right now in Charles' theater. Yeah. Now, I've known Charles for years and years. I came down here the first time to deliver a bunch of 24s for him and a couple of the guys in the area that were, that were buying them. But uh, you know, I've been to Charles' house a couple of times um, and vice versa, if he ever come up my way or, yeah. or you too, you know, my, my door's open, come, come in, take a listen. And that's what I want. You know, my customers a lot of times will, will either call or email and 90% of the time they get me. Yeah. Um, Josh is, is a, he's a, getting more in on the front lines, I guess now, mm -hmm. uh, these days. And he's a super big help, but a lot of times customers deal directly with me. Yeah. Gotcha. So I'm the guy who answers the phone. Right. I'm the guy who 90% of the time, I'm the guy who re replies in emails. Yeah. And, um, you know, like I said, with Josh and James and a couple other guys, that are at the shop, they we all like staying really close knit, so we can, if a customer calls and has a problem, we can, you know, really quickly be like, oh, that's that guy. I remember him ordering. You right. Know? So, uh, I like having having the company be the way that the size it is right now, so we can have that interaction. Very very cool. Definitely appreciate that, and and it's nice being able to to pick up the phone and know that you're talking to the owner. Yeah. I mean, the guy that designs this and and is the most knowledgeable about their product, probably than any other employee on uh, on the payroll, so to speak. So that is definitely super cool. So if somebody had a question or if they're interested in, in maybe purchasing something or looking at your products, kind of tell us what's the best way to contact you. Best way to contact us is through email and or phone calls. Okay. Um, and we, I tell customers this all the time, don't feel bashful, especially when calling, to keep calling. Because mm. if we don't answer the phone call, we're such a small company that if we don't answer a phone, yeah. we've got our hands on on speakers. Gotcha. We're gluing spiders down. We're you know putting surrounds on. We're doing all that kind of work. So we have our hands on the speaker and we can't get to the phone. Yeah. So if you call back, we'll we'll do our best to answer. And we try to call back and look through our call logs and, and call back in the order which it came. Yeah. But we're you know we're really busy these days, so yeah. it's we're getting bigger quicker, which is great. And we're we're trying to manage that as well. But um, but yeah, if we don't answer through email or phone, email us again or call us again. So Nick, you've got subwoofers, you've got uh, home theater speakers, but I believe I also saw on your website that you offer car audio speakers and subwoofers as well. Is that correct? It is correct. Yes, we offer car audio speakers as well. And on that note, when I came down here, I drove the Audi, which has all my car audio speakers in it. In addition, it has a stealth 24 inch woofer in the back. A 24 inch in the back of a car. Yeah, it's totally stealth. You don't even see it. Are you serious? Yeah. Can we go check it out? Absolutely. Dude, let's go look at this. All right, so this is the Avant, the Audi. And this is when we have our 24 inch woofer in and a stealth install. So when you open it up, everything looks normal. It's like you can go get your groceries in it because you can. And underneath of this floor right here, is our Infinite Baffle 24. You gotta be kidding me. Holy cow, that is awesome. So you got some big amps there. Yeah, the amplifier up there is our big four channel. It's bridged down into two channel. And it drives the each coil of the HS24, or the IB24. And then the amplifier that I'm 
I've got on the sides do the front stage. So the amplifier on the right right here does the mids and highs, and then the amplifier on the other side over here does the mid bases. They're in here. And you can see back behind there is also our, our DSP. Nice. So everything is super stealth. And then I did mention it is infinite baffle. So you can see the front of this woofer right now. Right. But literally the bottom of the woofer is hanging out underneath. You gotta kid me. Let's see if we can see it. And the motor does have six coats of clear on it. And the back of the cone is Kevlar. And again, the Spider's Nomex, so it's totally weatherproof. And I have driven this in the rain, and I do drive it in the rain. So it's totally fine under the elements. That is absolutely incredible, Nick. Super, <laughs> you, super cool. Yeah, so then when it's all said and done, you start putting things away, and then you can literally go to the store in it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe because we're on our way to 100,000 subscribers. I've got a link to Stereo Integrity down in the description below. And as always, you guys be blessed and we will catch you in the next video.